uh, first of all, what is graphics in general? It's just everything that you see. Uh, basically, video, text, images, it's all graphics, right? But for today, as you might know from the title of this, uh, it's just about three things. First one is CSS graphics. Uh, basically, everything is on the web is kind of styled with CSS in some shape or form. So it has animations, it has transitions. It's great for basic things, uh, but at the same time, web also has SVGs. SVGs are scalable vector graphics, basically an image that can scale as you wish. And uh, you as a developer can define how it looks just as an element, right? It's just a HTML. So it's an image that you can programmatically actually generate, uh, which is uh, not something that you can do with normal images, right? Uh, you can say that, hey, please draw this and this here and here in React. Uh, but for SVGs, you can do that. And that's useful in some of the cases. And Canvas is uh, somewhat a new thing in the web. I mean, new as in 10 years. Uh, but at the same time, it's not commonly used. Uh, but basically, what it is, is just an image that has contexts over it, the called context. But basically, it's an image that you can draw above. Uh, it's a, basically a buffer that or a painting called Canvas, which you can paint anything using different APIs. Uh, Two primary ones are GLS and 2D context. Uh, GLS is super advanced uh, stuff and 2D context is just a simple, hey, draft this line from this point to this point. And that's about it. CSS, uh, what are advantages of it? It's super easy to use it. Like everyone should know CSS if you're a web developer and do the design part of work. Obviously some of the guys don't do, design, uh, they just do the like coding, like logic and things like that for React, but at the same time, I don't think that it's hard to learn what CSS is, right? It's simple. It has complex features, animations, transforms, like even 3D ones. And as you will see in later on, you can do a lot of stuff with just CSS. And it's somewhat fast for what it does. And for CSS, you have a lot of tools, right? You have webpacks that can compress your CSS and you can uh, use things like SAS or SSS and make like functions and things like that. And actually it's pretty useful in more advanced CSS things, but at the same time, it's main disadvantage that while sky is the limit with CSS, right? You can do anything with it uh, basically, but there's a practical limit. You wouldn't put like, I don't know, 10 kilobytes of CSS with 10,000 lines of code into your project, right guys? I mean, some of us do that, but at the same time, there is practical limit of real world usages. Uh, once again, rendering performance is fast for what CSS does, but at the same time, it is slow because you have to create actual DOM nodes and then you engine must position them. It must apply some rules to it. And because CSS is cascading style sheet, it also needs to compute which style is active for the current node. So it's fast for what it does, but at the same time, comparing to SVG or Canvas, it is slower. And it's once again, less practical than other solutions in some of the cases. Uh, a lot of things can be done with it, but it has some limits. SVG, the best thing of SVG, especially in web, uh, when we're talking about uh, web frameworks, or HTML based SVG because you can put SVG as an image, just use an image tag with SVG image in it. And that's different from when you just put SVG code into your page. Uh, because when you just put your the code into your page, it can be actually styled with CSS. So like you can change the fill color, for example, when user hovers over some element. Uh, and I will actually show you later on uh, some of the examples of such things. Another advantage is still an HTML element, so you can create it from React. It also supports the events. So for example, click events, uh, which means that you can do UI elements using the SVG. You wouldn't do like forms, for example, but you still can do some nice buttons that when you click on it, it has some animation and things like that. Uh, one disadvantage of CSVG and at the same time advantage is that you must make it, right? You it's different from a CSS and uh, 
it has tools for it actually, which is a good thing. Like Illustrator, Figma, or just ask your friendly designer uh, who knows how to draw SVGs and you can make it in this way or you can just Google it, right? Uh, that's also a possibility. Uh, and it has built-in animation support, uh, which is somewhat unsupported, but at the same time, 97% of web browsers do support animations built in into SVGs. Depending on the project, you might use it or might not use it. For example, if you need Internet Explorer or uh, old versions of Edge that are not based on Chromium, they don't have such animations, right? But at the same time, maybe it's a good trade-off because your SVGs would still work even if animations wouldn't work, which can work for some of the projects. And with SVGs, complex stuff is more practical and possible. Once again, it's hard sometimes to how to make it, but it's practical, more practical than CSS, I guess. Disadvantages, new syntax to learn. Uh, SVG is a new thing. Most of the, like, kind of like, when they got into web development, they don't think about SVG as the first thing to learn. And simple stuff like, hey, draft a circle or draft a box, rect rectangle, is somewhat easy to do, but then you go into more complex stuff like groups, like uses, like masks and clippings. And uh, that has a lot of, like, things that you would need to learn, most likely. You might need JavaScript to have complex animations because while built-in animation support of CSVG is good, it like, has a lot of things, but at the same time, if you're talking about complex stuff that you can do with CSVG, you can uh, basically transform one SVG into another SVG and have nice animation in between. For example, you might have seen it before, like if you use Material UI that you have a play button, right? It's a triangle, uh, triangles like so, right? And then it transforms into two uh, pause button, right? Into just two rectangles. And it has a nice animation. That's basically something that you would need to do with JavaScript. Uh, doing it with SVG would be pretty hard. And it's harder to make it adaptive or responsive compared to CSS. Uh, basically what I mean by this is that you most likely would need some custom logic uh, because there are no, uh, how to say, there is no layout engine in SVG. SVG is just an image that can be scaled up or down, uh, but you cannot change the position of element, for example, when it doesn't fit on the screen. Uh, it's just something that we need to somehow implement. Canvas, it's blazing fast if you know how to do it. <laughs> uh, compared to CSS and SVG, Canvas is basically, hey, paint this and this here and here. And as a developer, you might say that, hey, I know that I need to redraft just this region and I need to execute these commands and uh, basically just repaint what exactly was changed. And it's still somewhat vector-based, uh, while actual Canvas is a pixel image but you can scale it to any size. And you can just scale your draw commands uh, to be scalable and vector-based. So while yes, Canvas is basically an image that you can paint over, and it actually uses pixels uh, as underlying uh, data structure, and you can export it to PNG or any other image, which is analysis thing. Uh, it's still somewhat vector-based because in quote marks, uh, you can just write the code that would be vector, uh, like basically SVG renders into static image anyway on your screen or the screen of the user. Uh, disadvantages, uh, simply put, it's an image tag. Like every disadvantage that you have with image, uh, the things that you, it's hard to resize it, it's hard to put it on the page, it's like not a responsive adaptive, same thing applies to canvas, it's basically an image. You can still make it cool and you can still make it responsive adaptive the same as you can do with SVG, but you would need to write code for it. Uh, no animation, CSS support, etc. Same as an with image, right? It's just an image. So no CSS support, for example, you cannot do that, hey, when I hover over this thing, right, in my UI, that this should pop, right, or should change color. No, you can't do that with Canvas. And you can do that with SVG, which is an advantage of that. Uh, no this is support of event events because once again uh, the browser doesn't know that this box is clickable right uh, it can say that hey why it's native in 
because you can still make it as a JavaScript, right? You can just say that, hey, uh, when user clicks on this and between this and this coordinates, then, hey, it's clicked on this element. So you can still make your own event system, but there's no native support of it in the browsers. And it's blazing fast, yes, but it's super hard to optimize it and make it blazing fast. And if you're talking about optimizations, uh, OpenGL or Java, uh, OpenGL, yes, which is used in browsers, is even harder or bulkier because you need to either use libraries which are pretty weak in their size, like uh, 3GS or Pixie. Uh, but at the same time, it's also the issue that GLS is heavier on your graphics card because it's dynamic and most likely you would re render every frame. Uh, which once again, it is faster than drawing can. For example, in CESA, the same thing, maybe, or maybe not. Uh, because there's a lot of optimizations that browser do uh, to make sure that your CSS animation is fast and it's less CPU intensive, basically. So what should you choose? Uh, CSS, if you graphics are simple, I will show later on if the more complex stuff that you can do with CSS, but at the same time, like even practical, really cool looking stuff, you can still do it with CSS, right? It's every website is built on it, right? And it would still uh, have any every advantages you already have. And one thing to remember is that uh, SVGs can be transformed to fonts and fonts are also part of CSS kind of. Uh, they can be also, then you can also use fonts in SVGs, but let's not talk about that. So for example, if you have 20 icons, uh, it may be worth for you to use, uh, to build a font for, out of them and use it as a font, uh, which uh, a lot of fonts like font icons are some or material UI icons are they doing under the hood. Uh, SVGs are good for graphs, for example, when you want to display some data on uh, the front end. Uh, I don't know, you're doing some mathematical stuff or you just want to show the monitoring data for the user. SVGs is great for it. Uh, it's basically for data visualization, it's a king, I would say. Some heavy animations can be done with SVGs and actually pretty cool ones. And basically everything 2D that can be put as a static vector is also pretty good for SVGs. And Canvas is great for everything, but as I said before, it would need a lot of code, which might not be practical, or you would need to use some libraries, which also might not be practical because of the browser support that your project requires or size constraints because it's slower to load big uh, libraries. And browser support is lacking for some of the features uh, that Canvas has. For example, GL as, uh, is somewhat a new feature, but at the same time, it might not work on the end user. It might still work as in execute your calls and draw something on the image on the screen, but it might be super slow. Uh, that, for example, what Chrome is doing in Ubuntu or in any Linux distribution, basically GPU acceleration is disabled there uh, for GLS and it basically emulates it on CPU. So, which is once again, slow. All right, now let's talk about modern stuff, <laughs> about graphics and how you can use them in React, View, or Angular, or any other framework that you would use. Uh, CSS, I guess you already know how to use it in any framework. CS, uh, GS and, uh, CSS and GS can be used or anything else. Not thinking new, right? SVG can be such a static file, right? You can just, if you need just static files that you want to display without any animations or hover events, things like that, or you could generate it dynamically, right? Uh, actually, one thing that React, for example, has is a uh, Webpack processor that processes, uh, takes SVG files and outputs it as React component. You might say, hey, why I want this? But as I said two slides ago, if you want for your SVG to have hover events, for example, when user uh, hovers over it, if it's a button or when user clicks it, uh, you would need it as an HTML uh, element, not as a static image. And Canvas, you would need to use libraries like Convo, Fabric, Pixie.js. Uh, there are no other ways around it, I would say. Or if you need 3D graphics, uh, 3GS is a good alternative. Now, a few words about that thing. 
Uh, that free is also data-driven uh, document. It's a kind of a old library. It's from even before React and things like that. H is basically jQuery H, uh, but it helps you to process draw and work with data. What I mean by that, that you have some kind of graph, right? But you might have points from X zero to X 1000 and Y from zero to 10. But user screen is a bit, has a bit different system coordinate. Right? It has a bit different uh, coordinates. Uh, that free will help you to process such stuff and output it into more drawable or easier to draw format. It's reactive, as in you can pass new data and it would re-render uh, your stuff on the screen. And it's doing it somewhat fast, but at the same time, if you compare it to React, it might be slower because it would basically re-render entire screen in some cases. Uh, it's not as, in, as cool as React. If you change just one data cell, for example, uh, but at the same time, it's fast anyway. Uh, but it's practically a DOM library, so it just works with pure DOM. It doesn't integrate with React or any other framework or Vue or Angular that nice. So you would need to build um, some layer between them. For example, you might just render it to div, which handled by React, or you might have some bigger integrations between them. Uh, but basically, we need integration. Uh, but at the same time, uh, any dead free code can be transformed into React, View, and Angular, and it can be still pretty fast. So in most cases, you don't need dead free. And if you need it, then yes, you would need to find some way how you can combine them. If you're, for example, using React, and you want to use dead free as well. Uh, but in most cases, once again, it's not needed, and you can always use dead free just to process your data and not output it uh, to a HTML page. Here's an example about data. Uh, just, for example, we have just a sound player, right? and this is music, some, some music or some sound, and you want to show how much loud it is at some point right, to the user and uh, it's, uh, show it to him. We obviously progress bar how much you are in this music or soundtrack. Here you would need to process and compress your uh, sound file because sound file has 50,000 samples, right? Or 1 million samples. And you need to compress it to just 20 that you would display to the user. And also you would need to find the maximum amount that, because once again, a uh, user screen is just 20 pixels wide, right? Uh, or not the user screen, but uh, the area that you want to output it or the height is limited. So you want to know the maximum height so you can get this fake form down to this one, right? Uh, just to compress it and fit it into your display area. And you want, if you want to make it adaptive, for example, you uh, might want to have the same compression algorithm on the front end and backend, for example, sends to you 1,000 samples and you would put either 10 or 20 or 30, depending on the screen size. For mobile, for example, you might output less because the user doesn't need so much information or you just want to make it like so. All right, and how this example was built is basically, we have two kinds of boxes, ones that are fully filled and ones that we have a full fill box, right, the red one, and we have just a smaller one that we put uh, depending on the divs that you use. This is pretty simple stuff, right? You can do it with CSS or you can do it with SVG or Canvas. Uh, it's not super hard to do it with any of these tools. Uh, but remember that I said that some of the things are more practical to be done in the SVG and not in uh, CSS. This is just boxes, right? But you might, for example, want to add rounding to them. And you might not want to round this uh, box that is uh, progress because it would just look weird or designer said that you should just round the corners of the these bars. And doing so with uh, CSS would be actually pretty hard uh, because when your field progress gets to almost end, you don't want to be around, you want to be round, right? You want to be cut off, cut it off a bit. But actually doing it is SVG, as I said, complex stuff is simple there. Uh, you just add a clip path uh, to your uh, thinking and it just clips. This is actually was made with SVG and it just clipping the uh, bars for you. 
so once again sometimes css is super simple and yes you can do a lot of it but here for example this would be more impossible and more impractical to do in css but in svg it's just literally five lines of code anyway what you can do with css what are examples of css uh, there are a lot of interesting things that you can do with CSS, for example, 3D graphics or animations, sorry, or animations like this book, opening or closing. You might have seen it previously on CodePen, but this is a more practical stuff because for this book, how it's actually done, uh, remember that I said that, hey, preprocessors for CSS is pretty good because they allow you to output uh, bigger data in processing. So how it's done that this example has each line as a div, and basically, the more diffs that you have, the more nice animation it would be. But this one, I think, uses like 100 diffs just to display this animation, which is quite a lot, right? Like you, it's more impractical than practical one, and you would need to repeat a lot of stuff. That's why it's actually using the preprocessor uh, to just basically generate this data. And this slider is actually pretty nice. It's actually more of practical thing uh, because it's not that hard to implement and it actually might be useful for you on the design that you have right and on the right is code pen uh, actually pretty good example of what can be done with css because hey you might think that hey this is some svg because we have round things and it's super nice and we have but no actually these icons are svg like the gear icon or the drop down icon is svg right but the actual design is just three divs uh, with background div so like four or five divs with text in it and actually pretty nice animation in javascript so and once again here it would be more impractical to ssvg because it's actually adaptive or responsive whatever you want to call it and this example is exactly example of why you don't want to use svg because it's not a position layout engine and if your screen is bigger this javascript window would move actually to the right so yeah, that's not something that we do with SVG. But what can you do with SVGs? Uh, honorable mention of GitHub here down in the right corner because this is actually SVG. And when you hover over some part of it, it's actually shines, which is a nice thing that you can play around with. Uh, and to actually play around with it, you actually need to log in into GitLab because on GitHub.com they're just using static image. I don't know why. This is really nice example of what can be done with SVGs and it's more impractical with CS, vanilla CSS, I guess, because you still need CSS to uh, have a hover event. And uh, why it's honorable mention because this uh, line kink is basically the same thing when you hover over some of its elements, it lights up and actually this is pretty cool looking. Uh, but this is actually pretty practical, uh, what GitLab has done. Other mentions is this really nice graph that represents data. And this world map, they are actually taken from that free uh, GS examples page. And it just shows you what you can do with uh, just SVG. And actually, the nice thing about these examples is that you can copy paste them and uh, transforming them to React code or Vue or Angular isn't that hard. It's somewhat straightforward to transform this dead free code into. Uh, React code, and it's actually, once again, somewhat fast, even if the data is dynamic. Or oh, here's an example of like super nice SVG uh, uh, selection uh, thingy, and it's fully built on SVG, and it actually has animations, hover animations in it. So, yeah, it's once again a show of more practical and complex things that you can do with SVGs. Uh, you wouldn't do this obviously with uh, vanilla HTML and CSS. And Canvas, uh, this is a just literally a screenshot from uh, Conva.js, and it's more practical one because Conva.js is a framework that allows you to have built UIs with uh, Canvas elements, which is a great thing, for example, if you do an, I don't know, image editor or SVG editor or a game or something like that, uh, or for example, Drava.io a website that where you can build uh, nice graphics or nice uh, uh, things with uh, but basically it's using most likely canvas or svg under uh, who's the hood i'm not sure about the driver but 
if you want to make some editor where you edit some data and you want to drag and drop, for example, right? Uh, you can do it with HTML, obviously, but Canvas is more performant in this case. And actually here, you actually need to use something like Canva.js or other libraries. And actually a few words about Canvas. Uh, OpenGL, as I said, is uh, mostly impractical for most of the things because it's not supported on every device. Even if the API is there, it still might be slow. And initial loading of uh, OpenGL might be also slow. Uh, there are a lot of things that you need to optimize to make it fast. And the only practical use cases I see for it personally are 3D games and other games, or if you need some kind of 3D, uh, because using it for 2D doesn't really make sense because Canvas 3D mode is the best for it. And there are a lot of libraries for it. And basically, if you want to use Canvas, the best things that I know what, how you can use it is just go and head and Google, for example, uh, some libraries for it, like Conva or Pixie or any other library for it, and just use it. Uh, don't try directly using it for anything that is more harder than, uh, I don't know, uh, cutting an image and displaying only a portion of the image, because that's something that you can actually pretty easily do with Canvas, just displaying, uh, like if you have this big image of, uh, I don't know, picture or avatar of the user, and if you want to just cut it, for example, to pick it, uh, to uh, upload it. You can uh, cut it via Canvas. And as I said before, Canvas can be exported uh, then to, it can be exported to a PNG image. So it's great, for example, for picture upload, right? And that's uh, literally 20 lines of code of Canvas, or you can just install a library that will do the same thing for you. Uh, just cut an image uh, when user uploads a picture to your website. And anything harder than that, you would need most likely some kind of library to use Canvas. All right, uh, that's it for the actual presentation. Uh, now uh, is the questions and answers session, guys. So any questions, guys? Uh, 